All right, let's talk about advanced staggers, which are new in GSAP 2.1. And here we've got 15 divs, each with the uh, class of box applied to them. And we've got a timeline set up here with a simple stagger to uh, call that's scaling things and animating the Y position and uh, just yo-yoing them back to their uh, original position. And we've got a little ease set up. So here's the standard way of staggering. We've got the stagger parameter set to 0.1 seconds. And that means that there's going to be a tenth of a second in between the start time of each of these animations. So if I set this to 0.5, then it exaggerates it a little bit more. So we can see how things are spaced out. Okay, so nothing advanced here at all, but in uh, GSAP 2.1, you can now uh, define these in a more readable way like this and just get rid of it there. Okay, so nothing terribly advanced here, but uh, oh, and by the way, you can set it to a negative value and then that will cause it to start at the end and move its way back. Okay, but here's where we'll get a little more advanced. Now you can set it to an object and set an amount. And this would be the total amount that is split up between the start times of each of the animations. So in this case, one second would be split up evenly uh, between all of them, uh, which is different than the original way. Uh, the original way is you set a specific amount that goes in between each one. This is the total amount. Uh, that can be handy. Now, you can also define a from value. And again, this is where it gets more advanced and fun. So let's animate, let's, you know, stagger them out from the center. Uh, or we can also set that to a keyword of end, or you can uh, define it as an index value. So let's say, for example, that we want to start with the fourth div uh, and emanate from there. So since it's a zero based, you know, array or node list, we would say uh, the number of three would be the index there. So now you'll see that it's it's emanating out from that, uh, that particular element in the node list or the array that's passed in here. Okay, so you can also, let's get this back to the uh, original. You can also define an ease. So what this will do, if we say power one dot ease out, then it will have more space in between the uh, the beginning ones, and then it'll slowly get closer together towards the end. So again, if I exaggerate this a bit, then you'll see it more clearly how there's more space in between these, and then towards the end they kind of get closer together. So it's a little less, um, you know, if you're looking for more of an organic feel, this gives you a lot of uh, options. Uh, again, you can use any ease that you want there. Now the next thing that is fun about this is that we can do a grid. And so I've got some code here that you don't have to really worry about, but let's set this to, uh, we're gonna have 15 columns and seven uh, rows. So if I scroll down here, this is kind of the, this is what we would expect. You know, it's starting at the beginning and it's, it's you know, uh, animating out through the the uh, the array or the node list, but if we want things to emanate from the center again, uh, we're not def we haven't defined a grid yet. So the animation engine doesn't uh, it needs to know that you're wanting to animate things out from the center of a grid, and to do that, all we have to do is say grid and then we tell it how many columns and rows so in this case we got 15 and 7 so now once this updates we're going to see that everything emanates out from the center i think there's too much time here so let's tweak this instead of five we'll say one and a half okay so
so much better. So now things are truly emanating outwards from the center. Uh, or again, we can give it an index. So let's just choose, I don't know, the 12th element. So there, it's, it's going outward from there. All the measurements are accurate and gives kind of a fun effect. Um, now, you might not necessarily know exactly how many uh, columns and rows. What if you have a responsive layout? Perhaps on a phone, it's not 15 columns, it might be five. So you can simply pass in the keyword of auto and it will automatically figure all that out. So if we change this in our code to be like 19 and five, then it still does all the calculations that it needs to. And it's using the, uh, the get bounding client rect function uh, to figure all the, uh, the measurements out. So very convenient to be able to say auto. And then if you'd like things to emanate just on one axis to have the measurements here, let's get this back to a little bit more of a, a rectangular, you know, we, we need some more height so that you can see this effect. Uh, if we say axis of X, then you will see that it only takes into account the uh, measurements on the X axis. So again, things animate very nicely out. Let's change this to be Y and it's a very different effect. Let's go back to going uh, out from the center. And there we go. Still emanating out from the center, but it's just measuring things on the Y axis. So play around, it's lots of fun. We actually have something in the docs. There's a a code pen that you can uh, interactively play around with and it even updates the, uh, the code for you here as you select different things and it's lots of fun. You can even click on individual indexes and boxes and it's fun and there's some docs as well. So uh, have a blast. Check out the advanced daggers in GSAP 2.1.